After decades of cultural isolation, China began slowly but cautiously opening up to the global entertainment industry in the 1980s, and Hollywood immediately came knocking. Producer Janet Yang experienced the initial wave of interest firsthand. Back in the 80s, uh, after normalization of relations between U.S. and China, I was there in Shanghai with Steven Spielberg making Empire of the Sun. Bertolucci was in Beijing making Last Emperor. And these are two obviously very, very fine filmmakers making very, very fine films. So there was a feeling that this is the beginning of a whole new era. But the burgeoning relationship wasn't just about production access. Hollywood wanted to showcase its films in China and get a cut of the revenue. In 1994, China allowed 10 imported films a year. The very first was The Fugitive, starring Harrison Ford. Are you saying that I killed my wife? The movie was a bona fide success, grossing $3 million. What I want out of each and every one of you is a hard target search. But in the late 1990s, a freeze in relations after Hollywood produced a few films that Beijing considered to be anti-China, including Red Corner, and seven years in Tibet. Although the controversial movies were never shown in China, the punishment was severe. Hollywood was banned. At the time, the Chinese market was no bigger than Peru, really, in terms of the market. But it's very clear China could exercise uh, a lot of control. And Disney hired Henry Kissinger to solve their problems, and, and, and uh, eventually the ban was lifted. The relationship between China and Hollywood was revived and began to thrive. The foreign film quota rose to 20 after China joined the World Trade Organization in 2001, then to 34 in 2012. And then Chinese money started pouring into Hollywood. A lot of the, the fever about China was based on the fact that China had money. So every Tom, Dick and Harry came out of the woodwork and here to look for money there. And every Tom, Dick, and Harry in China, by the way, was putting money into projects. So there were so many random uh, connections being made. The combination of hasty deals in Hollywood and new restrictions on the outflow of money from China led to a big slowdown in Hollywood investments by Chinese investors, including Alibaba and Wang Jianlin's Wanda Group. But that hasn't cooled Hollywood's enthusiasm for the Chinese market. Filmmakers and writers Bruce Cameron and Catherine Michon's adventure film A Dog's Way Home just debuted in China. Expectations are high following the success of their 2017 movie A Dog's Purpose, which grossed nearly $90 million in China alone. Get out! We have a partnership with Alibaba, and they did a magnificent job uh, marketing the movie, getting the movie out there so that yeah. people were aware of it. In um, uh, something like this, it's all about awareness. People have to know that the thing exists to yeah. buy it, to go to see it. On A Dog's Way Home, uh, we are partnered with Bona, and we are partnered with Alibaba again on A Dog's Journey. So for us, like, it's expanding. Although the relationship between Hollywood and China is still healthy, there are a few potential bumps in the road ahead. One is the renegotiations on the foreign film quota, which stalled last year. The other is the ongoing U.S.-China trade war. How that conflict might affect the entertainment industry is the big question mark. Mei Li, CGTN, Hollywood.